Hey, Josh Lockhart here. This is the FFL Gloves Off podcast with my good friend, Joseph Whipple. Every week we come to you and we just bring agent success stories, what they're doing actually in the field, on the phone to be successful. And uh, Joseph's a good friend of mine and I've watched him get started, have success, and then keep climbing to have even bigger success. And uh, hey, buddy, really glad that you can be on. I know you've been grinding all day and uh, so glad you could you could hang out with us. You doing all right? Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on. I f I'm uh, honored. Hey, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Honors ours. So let's, let's just jump in it today. I mean, you know, uh, we just got done with, for a lot of us, dial day. So, I, I mean, I haven't talked to you all day. How, how'd it go for you? Yeah. So today um, I got to the office, started dialing around eight. Um, actually, it was a little rougher of a dial day for me. I was able to book seven appointments and then the, the back end of my day, um, I was taking some calls for some people who were interested in, in joining the agency. So um, trying to find that that balance between helping people join in and still setting appointments. OK, so just for everybody that, you know, so everybody's on the same page of what we're doing, like we are going out helping people with life insurance um, that have requested information. We'll jump into that. And mm -hmm. then also you're growing your agency and helping others to you know, become successful, get started like you did and, and go out there and, you know, help clients with life insurance and of course make money for their family. Right. Right. <clears throat> so how, how long have you been involved now? Um, I've been with FFL for seven months. Has it really been that long? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Now did you, yeah, just kind of give me your background. Do you have any okay. experience? Yeah. So when I first started out uh, before this, I graduated by, oh, by the way, I'm 22, just turned 22. So I graduated high school at 17, went straight out of, out of um, high school to trade school for 11 months. And I, I learned how to weld, got my certifications. Then I went, moved down to Florida, got my underwater welding certifications, became a commercial diver, moved to Louisiana, started doing that for a little bit. Um, quickly found out that the risk to reward ratio there was not there. Um, so I moved back to North Carolina and, and started welding for a friend of mine. And that's where I was until October of last year um, when I found FFL um, through, I found it on social media. I saw a bunch of videos, YouTube videos. It was all over TikTok and everything. So I filled out a form on the website and Mike triple dialed me and I finally answered on the third dial and the rest is history <laughs> wow okay <laughs> okay that's dude that's that's hype so of course of course you would go from underwater welding to selling life insurance i mean that makes yeah. makes all Total the sense, sense in the world yeah <laughs> uh it's funny so i actually got you know initially involved with the insurance industry when i was 22. okay and, uh, i was a personal trainer before that so okay. it, those two things obviously go together right oh yeah totally yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's so funny. So um, that that's cool because you know one of the things that I really loved about FFL is you know I had done recruiting and and you know agency building before, but I had never uh, you know ran ads or anything like that. And so turns out you know people know that you can make money with insurance, and uh, they're out there looking for things or running across ads and. And now, you know, you're one of the top producers in that agency and, you know, get better every day. So that's, that's pretty cool what you can do. Yes, sir. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when you got started, you know, just start fast, start slow. Was it just super easy? How'd that go for you? Yeah. So, um, definitely. I think, I think the key to getting started fast is being plugged in from the beginning and being coachable. That's a big thing. If you're in this to, to try to just figure it out and tough it out on your own and, and try to reinvent the wheel, then you're going to be spinning your wheels for a long time. But if you plug into the podcast, you plug into um, your, your, the person who brought you on and, and you learn and you're just like a sponge, you're just absorbing this information and, and you come in with an open mind just to follow the system, like the system works, like thousands of people have, have followed the system and, and gotten results. So what makes you think you're special that you're going to reinvent the wheel and, and get all these different results? Like people who are way better than you have tried it before and failed, just do what they did right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I, I had a guy uh, that I work with this week. He's like, you know, he, he doesn't come on live dials. He's not around a lot. I mean, I see him here and there. He throws up a policy here and there. But he's like, well, I'm kind of a lone wolf. And I was like, yeah, I mean, 
yeah, your bank account proves it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and you've heard the saying, right? Like if you dial alone, dial the phone alone, your business will dial alone or dial, die alone. I've already done I like that. I've actually not heard that. Before. You haven't heard that? Yeah. If you dial alone, your business will die alone. And uh, you got, I don't know, you got to be, I had, I had this old, uh, what was it like a teacher? I can't remember who said it to me. He said, if you, they they were talking to men, so I don't think this applies to only men, but they were talking right. to a group of men. They said, as a man, if you ever find yourself where you're not accountable to somebody else, that's when you're in trouble. Yeah. It's Whether it's business or whatever, right? Yeah. 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 Like for me, I don't, I don't want, I don't want everybody on live dials where everybody's working, calling, and then I'm not there. That would be weird. Like I'd Exactly. Do. Like even if, even if you take a day off and you feel like you deserve it, you still feel like crap because you know somebody else is working. Yeah. 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 I'm like, oh man, Joseph is so set some appointments. I can't let him beat me today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I remember roughly when, I don't remember exactly when you got started, but I remember roughly when you got started. I mean, you did, you came out of the gate swinging like the one thing, like even before I met you, I was like, you know, cause I, I remember meeting you in Charlotte, but I remember seeing you on the leaderboards. Um, if, even if it wasn't for sales, it was always for appointments. So like you were always one of the first one on our dial team in the morning on Zoom. You were always putting the work in. Yeah. Right? So, you know, do you, do you remember how many families you helped the first month? Yeah. Um, so the first month, let me see here. That was a, that was a long time ago. I know, whole seven. Months. I believe it was close to twenty three families. Yeah, my first month. Okay, yeah. that's. I mean, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, did you did you you know jump right into the thirty families a week thing? So you know, yeah, thirty I, a week. Right. That's that's what I, I started off initially, and something that gave me a big edge, which I would advise anybody who's new to start doing, if you're like super plugged into this thing and you want to get the best ROI on your leads is ask your upline or whoever brought you into the business. If you can, you know, get some practice and dial some old leads for them and just get practice on the phones. Like before, before I was even licensed, I was, I asked Mike if I could dial for him so I could get that practice so I could get a better ROI on my leads when I actually had to buy them myself. So oh, just man. doing that, um, my first day practicing for him, I dialed and set him seven appointments. Now, being that I wasn't super good at tying down those appointments, about six of them were the wrong addresses that I didn't verify. <laughs> <laughs> but I did set him seven appointments and he sold one. <laughs> I mean, that's so good. No one, I don't, I, oh gosh, no one's like proposed that. People often like, Oh, how can I get started without investing in leads? How can I, you know, do, you know, they're always like, how can I, but no one's ever like, Hey, let me dial some for you. Like you got any old yeah. leads laying around? Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, it just made sense to me to get some practice before I put my own money on the line. <laughs> yes. The winner's going to win. Yeah. That's awesome. So you mentioned, you mentioned the leads, right? So we have, oh my gosh, we have so many leads, right? We have internet Too leads. Many. They went on Google looking for life insurance. We have direct mail. Maybe they got a mortgage and they sent in a card, uh, Facebook, YouTube. I mean, just leads coming all over the place and there's a range of them. I mean, some are a dollar, uh, some are a hundred dollars. Right. And it's like the smorgasbord of in between. And I know for me, when I started the, you know, I started on like the, mostly the instant internet leads they were 11 bucks a piece. And I would buy like 200 a week. And I would help like, you know, 10, 12 families a week on average, right? That's kind of how I started. Um, but, you know, a lot of people will come in and they're like, well, you know, I want the, the good leads. Like just, they're like, I know you got them around here somewhere. Give me the good leads. So, you know, what, what did you start on? And then kind of how has, you know, your strategy evolved? Yeah. So, um, so first of all, there's no there's no Sean Mike leads. Those don't exist. <laughs> Sean, um, the secret leads. Yeah, the Sean Mike <laughs> secret leads. Um, the way I started, I started off how I just did what Mike told me, and he said get instant internet leads. So I got instant internet leads, and I bought a hundred of them, like you said, for the for the dial day, dialed through, set my appointments. And funny story, my first day actually running in the field for myself, that dial day, I set nineteen appointments on my first dial day. My technically my first dial day. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. And then I went out 
and protected all of zero of the 11 appointments I had for that day. <laughs> so that was, um, I sat with one person and, and I wasn't able to do anything for him because of a budget and, and, and some other stuff. But that was kind of discouraging. But then at the same time, because I was so plugged into like listening to podcasts and stuff, I just I just remembered, you know, they say when you have a tough day in the field like that, the field owes you, the field owes you. So that's what yeah. I just kept saying to myself. The next day I went out my second day in the field and protected five families. So it more than made up for that for that first day. I mean, um, my, yeah. I remember my first day wasn't quite as bad, but like, it, I mean, I did sell something. Now, my wife, Michelle, who, you know, like she she sold her first appointment she ever sat on. And it oh, was God. like, it was like a good one too. Uh, I mean, like <laughs> she sells, she sells. Yeah. And my first day I had six appointments. I sat on four and I sold one of them and it was the last one of the day. Okay. Total lay down. I, I pulled up to the lady's apartment and she was like getting her groceries out of the car. And as soon as I pulled up, I waved and she goes, she was with a friend. She goes, Oh, there goes my insurance man. I was like, well, I'm the insurance man. Here I am. Yeah. yeah. She told me she's <laughs> like, here's, here's I want to spend 50 bucks a month. And like, yeah, it, I did nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some of them are like that. It's crazy. Um, by the way, now that you bring that up, I had somebody today when I called them, the guy's like, Yeah, this is for insurance, right? And I was like, Yeah, the the final expense life insurance. He's like, Oh yeah, I've been waiting on you to call me. I filled it out and they said I had to wait till the agent called me so that I could get help getting insurance. He was like, I'm about to go go get a test done, so I want to make sure I'm good before before I get that. So please be here tomorrow at such and such. I was like, Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's crazy. I I mean, like, and and we can talk about it. Like, you said you set 19 appointments. That's really good. Not everybody, like, that's a good dial day. You know what that's, I mean? Yeah. Like, we're all shooting to hit 15. You got 19. They don't all go like that. In actuality, you know, people, if someone's watching this, they're like, I don't, I don't have dial days like that all the time, you know, like I'm yeah. telling to get, you know, I, I didn't fill it out, get out of here or whatever. But I had one the other day, we get on the phone, the lady's like, hey, life insurance? I was like, yeah. She's like, it's not that like term crap, is it? That's what she said. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's whatever you want. And so we started talking within the first three minutes of the conversation. She's like, yeah, I'm looking to spend a thousand bucks a month. I was like, okay. You're talking to the right guy. <laughs> You're I'm like, no wonder you came across my desk. That makes complete sense. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm the thousand dollar a month guy. All yeah, I'm the specialty, <laughs> the specialty guy for the thousand dollar specialty month guy. <laughs> but like some of them, you just that stuff happens. But um, <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. So what? Uh, so that guy, you got an appointment with him tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow okay. at uh, 12 p.m. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. We'll have, to, we'll have to come back and, you know, maybe do an update on what, what happened there. So definitely. what's, I guess what, you know, if, if anything, right, what have you, I mean, I'm sure you've learned a lot, but what's changed for you that you're doing now that's working versus when you started? Okay. Yeah. So I also came from an investment background where I wasn't afraid to invest at all. And I think I might've taken that a little too far um, because my first week, like I, I dumped way more into this than I should have. I was spending at the level that a top producer spends for their leads and I wasn't a top producer. So I didn't have the closing ratio or the experience in the home to, to spend that much. So um, I, just, I just started throwing stuff in and obviously I was, able to, I was able to make it back. But when I really started to see an ROI of a turn on my investment is when I started to find the older leads. So the, the thing with buying the older leads is the same type of leads. It's just they're a month older so they're like four bucks as opposed to 11 bucks. So then when, when you sell, you know, you may have to dial a little harder. You may have to comb through more people that already have it. Um, but you can get a lot of policy reviews and you know, those are buyers because they've already bought insurance and more likely than not, you can put them in a better situation. So when I started getting those appointments, I doubled my return on my investment because if somebody fills something out online and they remember it from a month ago and they yeah. still need help, it's it's more likely in my mind to for you to be able to help that family um, yeah, versus no. they're getting blown up all the time from just filling something out so they're even less likely to answer yeah no exactly exactly i think i think you and kasha uh talked about that a lot i mean she she kind of ran the same strategy and 
I mean, her ROI just exploded. I mean, she's yeah. at like a 10 X right now or something stupid, right. you know? So that, that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, and I will say though, like you, you're willing to invest as aggressively you did. Um, cause I was kind of the same way, especially when it came to like running ads to, you know, recruit unlicensed and licensed agents. Like a lot of people was looking at that those around with looking at how much I was spending, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. And I knew like, okay, yeah, I could be more conservative. I could do this. I could do that. But like for me, and this sounds like crazy is I didn't want the money. I didn't want the cash. I wanted a successful business so bad. You know what I mean? Because like yeah. the cash just sits there. We have inflation. Like it's just, like, I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not out spending crazy stuff or, you know, anything yeah. like I want the business. I want the people I'm working with. And so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I spent pretty aggressively too. found some good people. Um, that's how we met candy and, um, candy's a monster. Oh my gosh. I know. Like she's, it, it's awesome. And so like, yeah, it's, but I think it's better to err on that side because, you know, like some people, they can never spend that first dollar, right? It'd be, it'd yeah. be better to be on the side that you and I landed on because then you can just go, oh, let me just tweak. And you made the tweak and now you're crushing, right? right. Versus like, oh, I'm so afraid to even invest in myself and my business that I just never make it off the, the launch pad. So, yeah. And that's the, a lot of the business is, just little tweaks and adjustments here and there. It's usually not a majorly drastic overhaul, like completely switch your entire script or completely redo your in-home presentation, unless it's like absolutely terrible. Like <laughs> there's gonna be those rare cases, but normally it's just a little tweak here and there. And it's, it's you're like, you're off to the races. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, you know, writing America and Mu Accidental, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's that's, That's something Kosh has taught me is the right moo accidental. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. It's like you watch her when I see her policies come in the chat, it's like, you know, one, two, one, two, one, two, you know, that's, that's it. So yeah. any, um, any, any other tips, any other things that you could think of that's, that's, you know, that you've implemented that would help somebody that's kind of following the same path as you? Yeah. I mean, don't be, a, once you start being successful and you start seeing that money come in and your bank account is bigger than it's ever been before, don't get comfortable and slack off because that's when you're going to get hurt. That happened to me a couple of weeks ago. So I, I was like just stacking and, and I was like, this is great. Like I'm doing fantastic. And then uh, kind of complacency kind of set in. And that's where I think reinvesting everything you make back into your business just to build it bigger and just keep compounding that snowball effect is the best strategy. Because if you just stack up your bank account, like, yeah, you can do that. But then there's going to be a point where you're like, eh, I don't have to dial the day. Meh, I paid my bills for this month. I'm good. And then the chargebacks start hitting and then you, you start slowly going down and you fall into that trap. <laughs> well, even like I think just salespeople, entrepreneurs, whatever you want to call it like by definition, you kind of have an ego. Yeah. Right. And especially once you are, you know, like you have a, a really good closing ratio or you can just set appointments at will, you kind of subconsciously go, oh, well, I can, I can, you know, help 10 families any week I want to. Yeah. And so you dial a little bit less, you get distracted a little bit more, you get a little sloppy with your presentation, you rush it. Next thing you know, you have a bad week. Next thing you know, you have a cancellation. Uh, you know, something's going to happen and it's going to throw you off your game. I remember I went through uh, a really hot season. I mean, I was like, I was, I helped, I submitted 115 families in a month. I remember that. That was right around the time I got started. And I was just like, I was like, just put somebody in front of me. I don't care. Just let me <laughs> go. And I, I went through a week where literally, um, I had a hundred percent closing ratio. Mm -hmm. Like I used to count not how many people said yes, but how many people said no, because I could usually count it in three fingers or less. Right. And, and I, no one told me no in the, this, this whole week. And I just, I was crushing. It was great. And then uh, luckily I've, you know, to my credit, uh, at least on this specific thing, I'd gotten beat up enough and gone through the cycle enough times 
where I was like, wait a minute, I think I think you're getting a little sloppy. Because what yeah. I what I realized that I was doing is I was just like, and maybe I shouldn't have changed anything. I, you know, thinking back, I don't I don't know. But like, I would just show up and I would like maybe skip really digging into their why. I'd just do a surface level and I would just, or like setting the table, I would just kind of skip and just go like, hey, we're here to get your policy set up. And, you know, then like I had a week where like it, it I felt like it wasn't clicking. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it's really, really easy to get a little overconfident and then you get a little sloppy you work a little less, maybe you take that day to sleep in and then bad things happen. So like you just, you always right. have to stay sharp and you know, that's why you see the shirts humble and hungry, right? Yes. yes. I need to give me one of those. I don't have one. Me too. I need to grab one, but yeah, no, what you said is exactly right because I find myself in the same thing. Like I'll get to where like, Oh, I'm just selling every, everybody I can sit, just put them in front of me. And then, you know, I find myself, I find one that I sit with and I didn't help them. And then I start thinking about it. I'm like, I didn't even ask them why they wanted it. Like I just went over there and just started digging into everything. Like just assume, I know they say assume the sale and you should, but like you got to do all the steps first. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, sometimes yeah. you skip over that. You know, like everybody's different. Right. But like some of the best, you know, business people, uh, when it comes to like sales, building teams, like they treat every single person the same, like go through all the steps every time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that's just, that's something I've noticed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think a big thing that helped me out too was keeping my activity up was the rule of eight and understanding why I need eight appointments each day. Mm -hmm. So what I typically do when I book, um, you know, the goal is 15 or 16. So seven to eight appointments each day. And then if you, if you break down the numbers, the average for eight is two are going to no show, two are going to no sale, two are going to reschedule and two are going to buy, two are going to say yes. That's a 25% closing ratio. And, you know, our, um, we, we average, you know, one family for, for each appointment. So if you have a 25% closing ratio and you're doing that four days, four days a week, that's two, four, six, eight families a week. You do that four times in a month. That's 32 families in a month. It's yeah. not, not that hard. No, no. I mean, yeah, you just run the schedule, run the numbers. I love that. Well, that's cool, yeah. man. So now you, you mentioned you're building an agency. How's that going? Uh, fantastic. So far this week. Um, so me and me and one of my guys have put 15 people in class this week. And wow. then I have another girl on my team that's I'm not even sure what she's put in, but she's she's a recruiting machine. So she's stacking licensed and unlicensed agents as well. Oh, man, that's, that's exciting, isn't it? Yes, so exciting. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I see. Uh, I see a logo coming uh, in your future very, very, very soon. Oh, it's coming. You yeah. got it all picked out and everything. I actually do not. The name okay. that I wanted, I just found out that it was taken. So now I've got to redo everything in my head. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, cool, man. Well, what's what's some yeah. of your goals for the year? Um. So at the end of the year, I. So I'm very. If anything, I overthink things. Um, me and Brody are very similar on that because we come from industries where you've got to be like very specific, especially with welding and metal and like doing your thing. Cause you can't mess up when you're cutting metal. You can't just make metal go back where you cut it, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like um, I've analyzed it. So I've I've worked out like how many people I'm putting in class each week on average for the month. I'm averaging if I keep up with the way I'm going, if I average 10 people in class a week, that's 40 people for a month, not counting five week months. And I, I worked it all out. So if, if I put in 40 people a month and only a quarter of those help 10 families a month, then my agency will be anywhere from 600 to 870 families a month by the end of this year. So that's the goal. All right. All right. Well, Hey, you, you heard it here. It's recorded. It's out there. And so you can look back and be like, Hey, I hit it. That's it. Yeah. I'm accountable now. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be accountable. That's awesome, man. Well, hey, really, really appreciate you hanging out with us. Appreciate the insights. And it's so exciting to see you continue to hit new levels and, and grow and anything I can do for you. Let me know. Appreciate you being on, man. Appreciate you. Yes, sir. Absolutely.